In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her holy rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the baptism of our Lord in the River Jordan. Our blessed Lord describes the wondrous occasion of his baptism to St. Bridget of Sweden. He says, Before I began to work my public ministry, a voice spoke out ahead of me saying, The axe has been laid to the tree. This voice was none other than John the Baptist. He was sent before me and cried out in the desert, the axe has been laid to the tree, which is to say, let the human race be ready, for the axe is now ready, and it is time for me to prepare a way to the city, to uproot every obstacle. When I came, I worked from sunrise to sunset, that is, I devoted myself to the salvation of mankind from the time of my incarnation until my death on the cross. I was put to test by the devil and suffered persecution from men. I made my way in the wilderness of this world and prepared a road through my blood and sweat. Saint John the Baptist truly prepared the way of the Lord. Prior to our Lord's baptism, he vigorously marched on telling everyone of the coming of the Redeemer. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich says she sees him running from field to field, entering houses and schools, questioning people in the streets, standing in the midst of crowds and crying out, crying out concerning the Messiah of whom he was the precursor. She often saw St. John the Baptist pointing in the direction in which our Lord was passing at that moment. But prior to the baptism, she never saw him with our Lord. The day of our Lord's baptism has arrived. Venerable Mary of Agreda describes how leaving our Lord's beloved mother in the poor dwelling at Nazareth, our Redeemer, without accompaniment of any human creature, pursued his journey to the Jordan. Our blessed Redeemer, as he took his first steps from the house in Nazareth, raised his eyes to the Eternal Father and offered up to him anew with infinite love whatever he was now about to begin for the salvation of mankind. Indeed, this was the moment our Lord's public ministry would begin and his royal outfit was nothing but the utmost poverty and destitution. When St. John was informed of our Lord's approach, he roused himself and with new courage began to baptize in spite of the threats made by the Pharisees and Herodians. John spoke of the Messiah. His word breathed so great humility as to cause real trouble in his own disciples. They were so attached to John. But John was so willing to see his own disciples disappear, he wished them to follow our Lord when he revealed himself openly. How do we compare with Saint John the Baptist in his humility? I must decrease, he must increase. O oh Lord, how concerned I am for my own renown. How concerned I am that people praise me and acknowledge me and think of me. Lord, how it upsets me when I fail to be noticed, when I fail to be remembered. 
put into my heart that humility with which you've blessed St. John the Baptist to know that the only life well lived is a life that magnifies Christ, a life that is even hidden and ignored by this world, but known only to God, a eulogy that the world sees as empty, but to God fills many volumes of books. St. John, give me the humility that lets me see my life's work, my life's projects disappear, decrease, come to an end, save that Almighty God is glorified and that souls are saved for eternity. St. John was constantly glancing in the distance, anticipating the approach of our Lord, for he knew this was the day of the baptism. It was during the 10 o'clock in the morning when our Lord, in his term, came among the aspirants to the pool of baptism. St. John bowed low before our Lord, and according to the Holy Gospel, he said, I ought to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? Our Lord answering, Suffer it to be so for now, for this is what righteousness demands, that you baptize me, and I be baptized by you. But then, according to Blessed Emmerich, he adds, You shall receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and of blood. St. John then begged him to approach him to the place of baptism, which our Lord did. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich continues, she describes how St. John scooped up water in a shell as his manner of baptism, while he placed his hand upon the convert's shoulder. The Baptist was wearing a long white garment during the ceremony. Our Lord descends into the water and stands in the water up to about the height of his chest, his left arm touching a tree, his right hand placed upon his breast. The loose ends of his garment floating in the water. St. John holds the shell and raising upon it, picks up water and pours the water over our Lord's head three times. One time the water flows mainly over the back of his head, once over the middle, and then the third time over the fore part of the head and on the face. Indeed, this is what is seen by the human eye. The blessed Emmerich also gazes deeper. She says, our Lord was perfectly transparent, entirely penetrated by light. One could scarcely look at him. I saw angels around him, but off at some distance on the holy waters of the Jordan, I saw Satan, a dark black figure as if in a cloud, and myriads of horrible black reptiles and vermin swarming around him. It was as if all the wickedness, all the sins, all the poison of the whole region took a visible form at the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and fled into that dark figure as into their original source. Blessed Mary of Agrida says that as soon as Our Lady's most holy son was baptized, the angels who attended upon our Lord brought Our Lady intelligence of all that had happened at the Jordan. She celebrated this wondrous occurrence by composing new hymns and canticles of praise of incomparable thanksgiving to the Most High and to the Incarnate Word. In addition to these prayers and hymns of thanksgiving, she asked the heavenly courtiers to help her in magnifying her Most Holy Son for having thus humiliated himself in receiving baptism at the hands of one of his creatures. Now, 
having seen this beautiful, wondrous ceremony of baptism, so simple to the outward eye, yet according to grace, according to God, so glorious. St. John turns to his disciples. St. John Chrysostom describes the scene. He says, John does not exhort. He simply gazes in admiration at Christ, pointing out the gift he came to bestow, the cleansing from sin, and the mode in which he would accomplish it through being the Lamb of God. St. John calls his disciples to follow Christ, to leave him behind from that point. These disciples, besides following Christ, their questions show their love for him. They call him master before they had even learned anything from him. They ask him, where do you live? And then, what a wonder. Christ does not merely tell them where to find his house, but he brings the two disciples with him, showing that he had already accepted them as his own. It was already late in the day. He didn't tell them to come another time. He addresses them familiarly, as if they were friends who had lived with him a long time. And what a strong desire they had to hear him. They didn't leave his house until sunset. St. Augustine beautifully comments on that wonderful afternoon that the disciples of John spent, now becoming the disciples of Christ. He showed the two disciples the place where he dwelt, and they came and remained with him. What a blessed day they spent, what a blessed night. Who can make known to us those things which they heard from the Lord? Let us also build in our heart and make a house into which he may come and teach us and converse with us. Do not love God for the sake of a reward. Let him be the reward. Let your soul say, One thing I've asked of the Lord, for this I long, that I may, I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may behold the beauty of the Lord. This beauty will ever be present to you, and you shall never be satisfied. Indeed, you shall be always satisfied, and yet never satisfied. O oh Lord, help me to realize that it is through holy baptism that you are with me through divine grace at this moment, if I have maintained myself in the state of sanctifying grace, that you are there continually being formed, continually being renewed in your presence through the love of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Jesus, inside of me. Saint Alphonsus writes, Whoever is baptized enters into the state of grace and is the friend of God. He also becomes an adopted son of God. This is the great gift which we have received from the divine love of Jesus Christ at baptism. The soul is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, a saintly religious sister saw a devil go out from an infant who was receiving baptism, and the Holy Spirit enter with a multitude of angels. But alas, continues the saint, my soul was beautiful when it received your grace in holy baptism, but I have disfigured it since by my sins. You alone, my Redeemer, can restore it to its former beauty. Do this by your passion, and then do with me what you will. Blessed Mother, in this mystery of the Rosary, I beg you, Help me to realize the dignity of being a child of God adopted 
in holy baptism. Help me to recover the beauty of my baptismal innocence and to make the grace of the baptismal innocence increase yet further through cooperation by performing meritorious good deeds. Blessed Mother, you cooperated with Almighty God perfectly, immaculately conceived from the first moment of your conception. Help me to follow your example, to increase this holiness, this beautiful gift of holiness that God gave me in baptism, that I may become more like you and more like your Son.